it's a huge congress. There are many insights um, regarding viral hepatitis. There are uh, uh, the following highlights to me. The one is that uh, we are getting closer to cure of hepatitis B virus infection, which uh, is really one of the unmet needs. Uh, the second point is that uh, treatment of hepatitis C becomes easier and easier. And what we have learned again during this meeting is that uh, in the real world settings, the drugs are safe and effective, but now simplified therapy is also possible, is entering real life. And this morning we have seen, uh, for example, a late breaking presentation that simplified management that you see a patient uh, before treatment and then only during follow up is easy, is possible and as effective as, uh, let's say, more intense standard of care. And then uh, the third major finding to me is really also in the field of hepatitis E virus infection. E stands for emerging. And there uh, we have seen also a late breaker presentation that a novel therapy, so fosbuvir, uh, which we use to treat hepatitis C virus infection, that uh, this has antiviral efficacy against HIV, but does not lead to cure of HIV infection. If we start uh, with hepatitis B virus infection, so um, we've been using entecavir, we have been using tenofovir for um, now 15 years in routine clinical practice. Um, here the question then is, is there a difference between tenofovir and entecavir? There have been some papers saying, well, they're all the same, suppressing viral load. Um, and uh, the question now is, is there a difference preventing clinical endpoints? There had been suggestions and some data from Asia that maybe uh, the risk to develop hepatocellular carcinoma is lower when using tenofovir as compared to entecavir. There was just a paper uh, published online last week in our journal, the Journal of Hepatology, that this may not be the case. At this meeting, again, we saw some data, well, there could be a difference. And, and this is certainly um, an area which we will follow, but where also this meeting uh, presented interesting data. This is the old treatment. But for hepatitis B, the new treatments, so which approaches are promising to induce functional cure of hepatitis B virus infection. And again, this meeting was uh, really pivotal. We saw on different substances, different strategies to target the hepatitis B virus, absolutely novel data. We saw for the first time that um, um, siRNAs may induce long-term reduction of hepatitis B surface antigen in the blood, a very nice presentation. Um, we saw data on other modes of actions, core protein assembly mediators. We saw for the first time um, also data uh, on, on different modes of action. We saw data also on therapeutic vaccination, one approach failed, one can argue. So this is a, an evolving field, um, raising a lot of interest and also stimulating discussion, I have to say, in the field of hepatitis B virus mononfection. What is um, interesting then is co-infection of B with D. So we have two viruses and uh, Delta stands for devil. It's definitely the most severe form of viral hepatitis. And I had the privilege to present in general session three um, the final results of a really landmark phase two trial um, which uh, investigated uh, the current standard therapy, which is pegylate and different alpha, in combination with a novel therapy, an entry inhibitor, Myclodex B, uh, in patients with hepatitis delta. So what I presented last year is that Myclodex B as a monotherapy induced a viral decline of D. Interferon alone also induces some decline of D. And what we showed, if you bring both together, we had a profound synergistic effect and for the first time we could really show that it may be able we may be able to cure HDV infection uh, in 30 to 40 percent of patients which is really a landmark. In addition we could show also that this combination led to the profound decline of hepatitis B surface antigen. So this trial in hepatitis D did not only have implications for Delta, but also for B mono infection. And now uh, phase three trials have been initiated. In Delta, we saw also 
very interesting uh, studies um, regarding the effects of interferon lambda, another alternative interferon, which uh, is supposed to have less systemic side effects. And here also investigators from Pakistan, from Israel and from other countries could show that uh, this drug really works in HDV infection, uh, also had less side effects, uh, and this uh, could be the stage for further studies which are going to be initiated or have already been initiated. So this was hepatitis D virus infection. Uh, one last word to hepatitis B virus infection. And a, a real clinical question is, can we stop antiviral therapy? Uh, we are giving these drugs and Tecavir Tenofovir for decades, for one year, five years, ten years. And the patients keeping us asking, doctor, do I really need to continue? Can I simply stop the drug? And also during this meeting, we have seen very interesting data um, on strategies in which patients I may stop this drug. There we need new biomarkers, which we can measure during treatment. There was a very interesting study from England presented uh, from King's, and they could show that if you measure uh, during standard hepatitis B virus treatment, uh, markers such as HPV RNA or hepatitis B core-related antigen, if you measure them in the blood, and if these markers are undetectable after three years of therapy, then these patients had a lower risk of relapsing with symptomatic disease. Still viral load went up in most patients, um, but uh, significant flares, hepatitis, which could represent a clinical concern, only developed if these individuals had at the end of treatment, before stopping, detectable markers HPV RNA or HPV correlated antigen. And this, I think, is, uh, is very interesting, um, which also led to the field that new biomarkers in hepatitis B are currently being investigated. Um, uh, HPV RNA correlated antigen um, in the blood, and this is something which is interesting. Also, quantification of anti-HBC antibodies, so the core antibodies, um, could be a new biomarker. So again, an evolving field, and in the hepatitis B alphabet, or hepatitis alphabet B does no longer stand for boring. Uh, that, uh, let's say, it's easy and nothing is going on. It's B is back. We have many, many interesting fields and it's an exciting area. And uh, the next year, stay tuned, there will be more data on hepatitis B.